Welcome to Boston. Home to the Boston T- Oh, wait, no, not that one. Oh, well, this one happened too. Well, anyways, Boston has been a major eastern seaport ever since it was established in 1670. We all know these United States to be free and independent. In comparison to other countries, we are one of the younger world powers. Just over 100 years after first being colonized by the British, we bit the hand that fed us and rebelled from our new nation. And what was the catalyst to all of this? That's right, you guessed it, the Boston Tea Party. Boston was one of the original colonial settlements in the mid-1620s and 30s. By the mid-1700s, Boston was some 16,000 strong. The Bostonians had the advantage of a town meeting form of government, which gave them a sense of autonomy over the British. This explains why Boston was such a major provocator in the years leading up to the revolution, because they could gather themselves away from the British. Before coffee, there was one drink that reigned supreme over all social classes, and that was tea. Tea was a drink of choice, and guess who controlled it? The British. They were trading for it and pulling it out of the Far East in places like India and China. And just like the British, the Americans loved their tea. Most merchants traded tea, and most of it was sold to the colonies. The British East India Trading Company was the main distributor of the tea to the colonies that was owned by England. The British were making more money than they knew what to do with. So what'd they do next? try and squeeze more money out of American pockets. Put into effect by British Parliament in 1773, the Tea Act was an excise tax on tea. An excise tax is a tax on a specific imported good. This was not the only tax passed that pissed off the colonists. Parliament also passed the Stamp Act and the Quartering Act just before placing a tax on the tea. The Stamp Act was a tax on any paper product or legal document that was purchased or exchanged. As you can see here, people also publicly displayed their discomfort with the tax. The Quartering Act was that locals had to pay for and house British soldiers in their own homes. The colonists were furious. The famous saying that emerged from this time period is, no taxation without representation meaning that the British Parliament was running the colonies from across the Atlantic Ocean and the colonists had no say with no one in Parliament to voice their opinion. Then the city of Boston passed the Declaratory Act which said just that, no taxation without representation. To get around these harsh taxes, men like Samuel Adams and other wealthy merchants began smuggling their tea into Boston Harbor. The same young, obnoxious young guys from Boston and the surrounding metropolitan areas that we have today are the same ones that they had around then. One group in particular caused the most trouble for the British. This was a secret group of young men led by Samuel Adams called the Sons of Liberty. The Sons of Liberty was Boston's way of getting back at the British without causing for immediate war. The Sons of Liberty were typical, loud, young males from Boston that loved looking for trouble, especially with the British soldiers. The Sons of Liberty would always harass the British soldiers and get into fights with them, as well as going to lengths such as tarring and feathering British tax collectors. If caught, these young men might be tried in a colonial court and almost always walk free, which infuriated the British. Samuel Adams was it. Oh, wait a minute, wrong one. Okay, yeah, here we go. Samuel Adams was born in Boston on September 27, 1722, and he was brought up in a religious and politically active family. After graduating from Harvard, he became an American statesman, political philosopher, and one of the founding fathers of the American Revolution, and later the United States. In the 1760s, as a member of the Massachusetts House of Representatives and the Boston Town Meetings, he opposed Britain's efforts to tax the colonies. He wrote a letter in 1768 called the Massachusetts Circulation Letter calling for non-cooperation of the city of Boston, which provoked the British to send more troops to Boston to occupy the city. Adams' letter of non-cooperation led to another famous outbreak called the Boston Massacre. In 1772, Adams and others developed the Committee of Correspondence, which unified people living in colonies that were anti-British. Adams also played a huge role in another historical event, the Boston Tea Party, 
and was in fact the main organizer. On November 29, 1773, Adams called for a meeting at Faneuil Hall in Boston. Adams then had to move the meeting to Old South Meeting House because too many people showed up. They were meeting to discuss how to get rid of the British ships that had just recently brought a new shipment of tea into the harbor. They originally passed an act to send the British ships full of tea back to England without unloading them. The governor of Massachusetts, Governor Hutchinson, was having none of that. He denied the ship's exits over and over. People were getting so worked up during the meeting that they started to walk out. Adams tried, but ultimately failed to stop the almost 7,000 in attendance from leaving and going straight down to the wharves. Due to Boston's large amount of landfill projects over the years, knowing the exact location of the incident will always be a mystery. If we were to travel back in time to visit Boston in the 1630s, we would not be able to recognize it at all. The area of Boston has more than tripled since then. In comparison to what it was back then, Boston is now 75% landfill. Griffin's Wharf was in reality 500 feet or so west of this marker, as the area was reclaimed for a mud flat when it was filled in and part of many of the landfills that happened in Boston. Back to the story. Most of the people just went down to the piers to find the ships. However, the Sons of Liberty had organized themselves to dress up like Mohawk Indians as a disguise, although the people from the meeting who contributed to the event did not dress up. Around 130 men, some dressed as Mohawk Indians, some not, boarded the ships and dumped all of the tea of the ships into the harbor. The colonists dumped a total of 342 chests of tea into the water. This was not an act of war. The Sons of Liberty did not destroy anything on any of the ships, and no vandalizing of any kind was committed, only the dumping of tea into the harbor. As you can imagine, King George III and the rest of Great Britain were livid, irate, fit to be tied, whatever you want to call it, but they were more than not pleased. They clamped down on Boston hotter than ever before. British Parliament passed the Intolerable Acts. This shut down the port of Boston using a naval barricade until all of the tea was paid off. The colonists were also now not allowed to hold town meetings without the consent of British officials. The amount of money the tea dumped into the harbor was worth in today's money is $2,232,885. Although Adams organized it, he also defended it, saying that the tea party was not an act of lawless mob, but was instead a protest and only remaining option the people had to defend their rights. In fact, there was another small similar little tea party on March 7, 1774, but it was much less destructive. But the issue was never the tax, but how the tax was passed without American input. The United States Congress, in fact, taxed the t tax tea from 1789 to 1872. Governor Thomas Hutchinson had been urging London to personally talk to the Sons of Liberty. If he had done what other royal governors had done and let the ship owners and captains resolve the issue with the colonists, the ships involved in losing their cargo in the Tea Party would have left without unloading any tea at all. On another side note, this event later inspired a theme park ride at Kennebec Lake Park, north of Boston in Salem, New Hampshire. I go at least once a summer, and I suggest you get up there and check it out if you haven't already. It does not disappoint, as long as you don't mind getting wet. But anyways, along with the Boston Massacre, the Boston Tea Party provoked the revolution, and it created more tension between the colonists and the British. The one main thing it did for the colonies was almost to unify them against the British. They were able to come together to hate the British as one and eventually win their independence.